Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to the review of a piece that is 100% stark staring bonkers. This is the Qantas V2 Mayan Limited Edition by Agard. Now, a quick look at the Agard website will reveal a number of other crazy looking timepieces, none more so than their recent collaboration with mixed martial artist and UFC fighter Georges St. Pierre, aka Rush. This one, massively oversubscribed on Indiegogo, looks absolutely nuts as well. Now, Mr. St. Pierre, as mentioned, is a UFC fighter. UFC is a sport whereby two fully grown men punch and kick each other until one either submits or is knocked unconscious. Back in Glasgow, we used to call that Saturday night. All right, enough waffle, let's get into the box. So what on earth have we got inside the box today? Just a word on the box, by the way, a little bit tatty around the edges. I'd be expecting a little more for my 400 US dollars than this one, but clearly all of the money today has gone on the watch. The watch itself is much more impressive than the box. Now, $400 is the sticker price, the thumbnail price today. Uh, on the Agard website, this one retails for 450 US, but there was one of those spin the wheel for a discount. I got 10% off. I think you should be looking for at least 10% off this one, hence $400 today. So let's get the box open. And there it is. It looks bonkers, like nothing else that I have looked at on the channel. Actually comes with a, a reasonably uh, sized instruction manual here. So we've got the V2 Mayan Limited Edition. This one is available in a kind of gunmetal. Uh, it's also available in steel or the rose gold that I'm gonna review today. Big thank you to Agard for sending me this one in for review. Uh, specs here, bit of a story as to why they're using that Mayan calendar and the components they use for this movement, water resistance and so on. Nice to have a little bit more substantial manual because it is quite an unusual piece. So what are we gonna do? Get some proper close-ups on this bonkers looking watch. We've got carbon fiber, we've got these dual balance wheels, we've got an awful lot going on. I'm gonna fire up the movement by giving it a wind that is a hand winder, this one. Pop it on the wrist, looks amazing on wrist, I have to say. A fantastic clasp and strap on this one as well and a loom shot believe it or not there's some loom on those little wheels there just underneath the 12 o'clock let's get on with it so we'll start with some dimensions and specifications as usual this one is 43 millimeters at its widest point across the case there very unusual kind of ovoid uh, structure here kind of egg like we've got 22 millimeter lug width now 50 mil lug to lug but look at the curvature on those lugs. 15 mil thick, but a considerable, pretty sharp angle on those curves. Very interesting two-piece case design here. You can see clearly that they've used this uh, back piece with the lugs, our uh, integral, and the mid case there as well. We've got a, a curved sapphire crystal, adding a little bit of distortion there. Look at that, very, very nice indeed. That cannot have been cheap to make. Apparently, Agard spent over a year getting the sapphire just right for this one, but it looks just gorgeous. But it only weighs 125 grams. So we've got this big, chunky case, but because they use a leather strap, it kind of disappears on the wrist. Another one of these watches that wears a lot smaller than its very unusual set of dimensions would suggest. Now you can probably see a little bit of carbon fiber up there at the kind of two and 10. There's also a little smattering of carbon down at the 6 p.m. advertising that this is a limited edition, limited to 999 pieces. Now that's 999 pieces of each of the different finishes. This one obviously rose gold, but available in steel and gunmetal as mentioned. So let's get on with the movement. This is really the, the big draw of this one then. So it's a hand winder by a Chinese company called PTS, but Agard have brought it in house. They've arranged, rearranged the layout rather, and they've replaced the hands for these dials up here. Very reminiscent of the Trifolio Millimetro that I reviewed a few months ago now. So give it a crank and you'll see, there we are, these balance wheels spinning up into action. So I'm not incredibly technically minded. Uh, I make no claims in that respect. I believe, however, that only one of these, this one on the right is the one actually powering the movement. The other one is there, well, I guess primarily for decoration. I believe there is also a kind of harmonic resonance benefit from it. Uh, allows the, the whole movement to be a little more accurate though I'm not quite sure how you measure the accuracy. Again, like the Trifolio Millimetro you're kind of reading down, we're just kind of 1.59, a minute before two o'clock there, but there's no second hand here, so 
You know, you really, you're measuring this one's accuracy over the course of a week, perhaps even longer, allowing you to get a, a reasonable feel for, for how this movement in here is performing. Hand winded, as noted, this one's got a maximum power reserve of about 36 hours when it's fully wound. So really you're gonna be winding this one every day. Look at that case back, just as bonkers as the watch. Definitely the most attractive case back that I've looked at on the channel. This kind of press medallion, clearly a separate part from the, the rose gold case back there. This one, a nod to the Mayan calendar, a 260 day Mayan calendar, still used apparently to name children and such like, but really adds a lot of visual appeal to what is already a visually appealing watch. Now I've got slightly conflicted feelings about this leather strap. Very, very comfortable, nicely made, kind of padded up here, but thin here, sits very nicely on the wrist, and I'll show you the clasp in just a second as well, embossed with the Agard logo. It just seems to me they could have done something slightly more interesting than full croc. You know, they've got this bonkers watch, great color scheme, carbon fiber. It's like they designed it, they had the mind calendar on the back, and then they ran out of time and just thought, let's chuck a full croc on the back of it. I think they could have done something a little more interesting, perhaps. But the clasp mechanism they've used is fantastic. So we've got a mill clasp, nice laser etched, with a very nice positive action on these pushers here. Real feeling of quality from this one. And the whole thing sits very, very nicely. Really nice and slim. This is it compared to the deployant clasp mechanism on my far more expensive Breitling Navitimer. And I gotta say the Agard clasp, superior. It fits very nicely on the wrist, the Agard, as a consequence. So there is the watch then sitting on my seven inch wrist. And it looks mental, frankly. I quite like it though. Again, as mentioned, it kind of disappears on the wrist. Those curved lugs mean my seven inch wrist, this thing fits pretty much perfectly. And the leather strap, as much as it's slightly conservative, com by comparison to the watch anyway, is very, very comfortable. And that clasp means the whole thing sits very nicely. You should be able to slip this one under a cuff without too much difficulty if you actually want to take it to the office. So, uh, loom shot. Well, frankly, I wasn't actually expecting any loom on this watch, so it came a bit of a surprise when I turned the lights out and discovered that those dials up there were loomed. To be honest though, they could have done with looming the little triangle up there at the 12 o'clock because without that illuminated, it gets even sketchier when you're trying to tell the time after dark. But hey, a bit of loom never hurts. So what do I think of the Agard overall then? Well, it's bonkers. Carbon fiber, dual balance wheel, Mayan calendar, and a bit of faux croc. It really is quite unusual. You already know whether this is your cup of tea or not, but if you are interested in it, you know, at $399, you're getting a bit of the look, if not necessarily the functionality of some of the far more expensive horology pieces with genuine dual balance wheels, you know, and you're getting something that's well built and wears very, very well. Those curved lugs mean this watch pretty much disappears on the wrist. A real surprise. It looks a bit lumpy, but it wears much, much smaller than those dimensions initially suggest then. So the Agard, very unusual, not gonna be to everyone's taste, but nicely executed, nicely made watch. So there you have it, a completely loopy timepiece by Agard. Very well made though, and I don't think too bad for 400 US dollars. You already know if you're into this one or not. If you're into it, check the Agard website. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.